within this lesson, we'll multiply two-digit multiples of 10 by two-digit numbers using a place value chart. Let's start with this problem, where we will multiply 30 times 23 using a place value chart. We can express 30 as 3 times 10, so that 30 times 23 equals 3 times 10 times 23. With the associative property, we can re then rewrite this as 3 times 10 times 23. Let's see what this looks like within a place value chart. where we have hundreds, tens, and ones. Well, let's see. We have 3 times 10 times 23. So we'll take care of 10 times 23 first. To model 10 times 23, well, this is 10 times, and we know that when we multiply by 10, like 1, 1 by 10, it would be worth 110. So we'll model 23 first. And then what we'll do is we've modeled 23. We have not modeled the times 10. So let's model what happens when we multiply by 10. When we multiply those three ones by 10, we get three tens, and when we multiply those two tens by ten, we get two hundreds. So we started with the twenty-three, we multiplied by ten. What we haven't done is we haven't multiplied by three yet. And to multiply by three then, we'll take those two there, and by multiplying by 3, we make two more of them. So we have the number, in the hundreds place we have the number 6, in the tens place we have the number 9, and in the ones place we have the number 0. So that 30 times 23 is equal to 690 from our place value chart. where in this step right here, we did three times as many. So three times as many as those two was six. Let's work through another example. Here we have 50 times 31. What's another way that we can express 50 times 31? Well, we can break apart 50 into 10 times a number. 50 is equal to 10 times what? Right, 5. So we can rewrite this as 5 times 10 times 31. Using the associative property, we are now at 5 times 10 times 31. Let's see what this looks like in that place value chart. We have hundreds, we have tens, and we have ones. What number would we model first? 5, 10, or 31? Well, we're working within the parentheses first, so it's going to be 10 times 31. So we know how to do times 10, so we will model 31. There's 31. Let's work on multiplying it by 10. Each of those 10s would be worth 100, and each of those 1s is going to be worth a 10. So 10 times 31 is 310. 
but I still have to have 5 times as much, or to multiply by 5. So to multiply by 5, we make those copies. And in this case, we get our answer then. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the tens place. <clears throat> and we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 15 with the hundreds. So that's 5 there. And then we can regroup one of those over to the thousands place. So that we have the number 1,550. Okay, it's your turn to try. Work out 20 times 32 using a place value chart. Pause that video while you do your work. Did you write out 20 times 32 as 2 times 10 times 32? You have 2 times 10 times 32. And then we would have to make our place value chart from there, where we have hundreds, tens, and ones. What number would we model? Hopefully 32, where then we multiplied by 10. 2 ones times 10 is 2, tw two tens, and 3 tens times 10 is three hundreds. So we took care of the 10 times 32, which would be 320. Now we just have to double it and multiply it by two. So within our place value chart, we make another row so that we have 640. Six, four, zero, and don't forget that placeholder. So 20 times 32 does give us 640. Let's try one last problem. Here we have 53 times 40. Which number would we break apart? We're going to break apart the number that can be multiplied by 10. So there we go. 53 times 40 does equal 53 times 4 times 10. Next, let's go ahead and rearrange this so that we then have 53 times 4, and then we can multiply by 10. We can model that. Now, another way that we could have written this is as, let's see, <clears throat> 53 times 10, and then times 4. Let's look at it both ways to see if, with those place value charts, if it matters. Whether we'll get that same answer or not. So let's think what's this happening here for this one. We have 53 times 10 and then times 4. So we model 53 first. We multiply by 10. So those three ones become three tens, and those five tens become five hundreds, and then it says to multiply by four. All right, so let's see. Three times four is 12, that's why there's 12 of those, and then times four also. So that's 5, 10, 15, 20. So there was 12 of those, so it needs a regroup. Let's see. Right there. We get one there. And then there was 20 of these, so these needed a regroup to two thousands. So the answer is two thousands, one hundred, and let's see. <clears throat> It looks like there was two left here. Two, one, two, zero is my answer. Now, 
The question was, if I had modeled it this way, would I have gotten the same answer? Well, let's see. 1000s, 100s, 10s, 1s. Well, it says 53 times 4 first. So let's model 53 first. And then let's multiply by 4. Notice that I have 4 rows of 3 here. 4 rows of 3. And then also those 5s multiplied by 4 as well. Now, let's before I multiply by 10, let me take care of my regroups. So I remember there was 12 of them. So there's 10 of them there. Regroup one there. There was 20 of them here. So these all regroup to... 200s. Alright, now I just need to multiply by 10. So these two here, multiplied by 10, are now in the tens place. The 10 that was there is over in the hundreds place, and the 200s are in the thousands place. So you get the number 2120 as before. We're working towards standard algorithm. And as you see with the standard algorithm, I do get that same answer. So we'll continue to work on double digit multiplication.